Speaking of prick, gotta get into. <laughs> gotta get into a lease mode. Well, hi everyone. We are live with the Broken Throne. Our We're what live. used to? Be... Oh my! Oh my God! Oh, oh my God! <laughs> you get over right, there. Right, there we go. Yeah. Oh yeah. There it is. Yeah. That, that looks way different. It's super different. Uh, yeah. Hi, uh, Broken Throne. This is our formerly Storm King's Thunder, now kind of it's a beast of its own making sort of campaign. A very broken throne. A very broken throne. Um, and throne. yeah, we're back. I'm Throck at Throck Plays on the Tweeters, and I'm your DM for today. I DM Friday nights, Saturday afternoons, and then uh, Storytell for Blades in the Dark on Sundays. And we love you, and we're glad you're here. So let's go around and say hi to everyone real quick. Say hi to Brand. Hi, Brand. Hi. Brand is playing a... Big <laughs> barbarian who hits people with his axe. That is correct. Uh, and then Zed. Hey! How's it going? Uh, I am Zed, or ZX, or Zedrin Storm Singer, or Elvex, or... Uh, any number of other possible names. Uh, I am playing an Asimar favored soul sorcerer of Kellum Vor. Uh, and uh, really, I just, I, I want to get my wings. I just want to get my wings. Um, also, you can find me on Mondays, uh, storytelling for the new to the party uh, game for uh, mostly newbie S players, newbie or newbie returning players. And I am a newbie streamer. Um, and, uh, that game has taken a, a momentary break due to life, uh, but we should be back on this Monday, uh, come hell or high water. I'm running something on Monday. I don't, I don't care what it is, <laughs> but I, I think it'll be D&D &D and I think it'll be most of my players. So that'll be good. Sweet. Fen. Uh, I go by Tavian, uh, and I'm Twitter is Tavian34. I'm playing Fen, who's a furbolg druid, who, you know, might be slightly prejudiced against humans, but tries not to let that overrule his life. And mostly he wants his party members to stop losing their souls. That that would be, he would appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> it, it's turned into a theme. Uh, and then Amok Elise. Hello, I'm a muck. I have no real other way of contacting me other than being in the stream. So I am playing Elise currently, human wizard, who is in search of her slightly wayward brother's soul. Yes, uh, and that brings us to Vale, who is dead, uh, who died. <laughs> uh, well, not died technically. Her soul is currently contained in a gem. She has been de soul She's been desold, and that is actually where we meet our adventurers today. Our adventurers are on the search for Barrack's soul, <laughs> which was taken from him and is now being held uh, in the city of Brass, awaiting transport to the, the third level of hell, the city of Dis, where it will be consumed or some other horrible torture by uh, the, the prince of the third level of hell. Uh, in order to find his soul, his sister, Elise, joined the party and has been an interesting dynamic within the group, uh, to say the least. Uh, she's very matter-of-fact. Uh, but in order to get to the City of Brass uh, and enter legally without becoming slaves or becoming captured, they had to prove to the, the masters of the gates at the City of Brass that they were planar entities, and none of them were. So they had to essentially go to the Feywild, where uh, one of their party members, Volta, knew of a place where should they uh, consume of the energy there, they would appear as planar entities for a time. Upon making it to this burial ground, they found it desecrated by uh, a, a being they believe to be called Aserac, who has created a number of these sorts of uh, places, uh, corrupted architectural things around the multiverse. Here, they were... Uh, trapping, I'm trying to figure out how to say this right, here they were trapping and transporting the souls of those who had died on this burial ground and in the area around it to some unknown other planar location, having made their way to the center of this above-ground dungeon. The party found an odd arcano-mechanical construct with an emerald on the top. The tabaxi veil, 
being the tabaxi veil that she is, decided to touch that emerald, and her soul was immediately ripped from her body as her body fell lifeless to the ground. And while they do believe there is a way to extract these souls, it is both costly, time-consuming, and incredibly dangerous, and also risky. Uh, And so, while her life hangs in the balance, another party member's life is in more immediate danger, and that's Barracks. And this is where we meet our party now. Having just seen Jax fall to the ground, not Jax, Vale fall to the ground, her soul ripped See, from her body. This is what comes of bringing in bad guys from other games, is that now you can't get, keep your tabaxi straight. Um, yeah, right. By the way, have we not yet made a curiosity killed the cat joke yet? I don't mm, think we have. I don't think we did, no. <laughs> and I, and I feel like that's that. a humongous missed opportunity. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Well. Um... So as Vale's body hits the ground, I, uh... The hit the floor. The hit the floor. In the back of my mind, I think she should have checked for traps. <laughs> uh, and then I reach, I guess, inside her vest and grab Mrar. Yeah. <laughs> and I look at Mrar, and Mrar. I kind of, like, point Mrar to Vale. Yeah. And then go, sorry, and I hand Mrar a piece of jerky. Mrar is the flying cat companion of Vale. It is also a cat, so it probably doesn't really care. Yeah, yeah I mean, if it was locked in a room with Vale's body, it would eat it, so. Yeah. <laughs> Starting with the face. Um, and then I'll try to sit Mrar on my shoulder. Speaking of, I have He'll kind of curl here. up. And Fen will come over and, and scritch him and Yeah. Take... I, I will watch after Mrar and make sure Mrar does not starve. Okay. Between the two of you, Mrar will feel like he has a new uh, family and will continue with the party as you like. As as a pet of the party. Um, so here's a question. If we want to reinstall this body, do we need to bring the body with us? Yeah, we just, I, start, just, yes. just jam it in the bag of holding you guys have. I guess. Yeah. Isn't that where we put barracks? Yeah, I don't no, have... No, bar- barracks back in town. But we, we, oh, yeah. that's right. But His, yeah, his body's still warm and pumping blood, though. Sean, yeah. is this one? Uh, no. So it's fine. Oh. It doesn't, she doesn't need oxygen. Just shove her in there. <laughs> I mean, on the one hand, doesn't need uh, oxygen. I could just carry her. I could just carry her. Like, guys, it's fine. Hang it'll on. keep there... the body fresh. There are, there are rituals for preserving dead flesh. I don't it's called have embalming. them. <laughs> <laughs> there are also I'm... just like little spells that you can cast, but I, I just don't have them. But just chuck it. I'm telling you, the body will be fine in the bag of holding for now. All right. What, what, um, okay. What what possible? What what is the concern that you? All right. Never mind. <laughs> I, I don't want it to decay. Oh yeah, it's not gonna decay in there. Cause Won't it? There's only so much oxygen, and there'd have to be bacteria and other little bitey things, whatever that stuff's called. The D and D equivalent of nibbles. I don't know. Okay, like what are we gonna do? Call, like, the best thing we have probably right now is probably like you know. Purify food is the best thing we could possibly do right now <laughs> to cast on her. <laughs> no, I'm just realizing that I'm going to need to get the the necromancy stuff to. Okay, keep how about bodies. this? No, 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 we could put. Oh, okay. Does anybody have? We just need to pick up some baking soda and like a little thing and rip off the side and put that in there as well. Okay, I know you didn't know her, but chill. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to provide you with with multiple methods to preserve the body to make sure that nothing no no harm comes to it until we can restore the, her soul to I don't I mean I could definitely cast purify food on her. <laughs> I, just, I put her in the bag we're good to go let's go we've okay. we've got the we've got the gem thing we've got the body so now it's a body bag of holding mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Mm. <laughs> Okay. Is any bag you put a body into automatically a body bag? I guess so. Yeah. 
Yeah. So Brand is very, very confusing. No idea what you guys were talking about, but he's going to go along with it. Excellent. So you guys are heading out. Yeah, because Brand's not allowed to carry her because he'll get confused in combat and then swing her instead of the axe once. <laughs> oh, that's true. Well, that raging. could happen, yes. Do you guys have any last okay. business you want here before you uh, move on? No. Okay. Hey, hold on, one second. Uh, yeah, yeah. This has not sure been my... a great place for me. I'm just trying to make sure my thing's up to date. Um. We showed up. I had an uncomfortable social interaction with a guy who I wasn't allowed to use any of my spells on. <laughs> and then we went and had a quest in which we had to deal with a bunch of crazy nonsense while being unable to rest and recharge. And then we lost Vale. And since all of this is simply because we also lost Barrack in like downtime, uh, <laughs> I'm very interested to just generally get the fuck out of here. Uh, at least he's gonna make an arcana check to make some arcane notes of this whole, like, system here that we're standing next to so make sure For that sure. like if I, if I need to reference it later or we need parts or no other nefarious reasons yeah no definitely not other nefarious reasons yes yeah I, I hear you yeah you you feel relatively well especially given previous arcana checks in your investigations as you have moved through this place you feel like you you have a pretty solid academic understanding of what's going on here and are able to make some some pretty solid notes uh in in order you know that in order to actually recreate something like this would take significant time. time and resources that's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah that's fine cool i got the cliff notes version yes okay back to fixing character sheet All i'm right. good so as you wind your way back out of this place uh, you feel that same necrotic energy that has kind of pervaded it slowly fading away. Uh, and you didn't realize it while you were in it, but there was this kind of pressure on you guys while you were here. And as the magic that is here, this, uh, this undead sort of spiritual magic, unwinds itself, you feel a little bit lighter Sorry. and a little bit... Uh, and a little bit more like you could rest if you needed to. Um, Which we making, did, we did. Yeah. Making your way um, out of that first cave, uh, you're back into the Feywild. Uh, it does look different than when you came before. Different how? The path seems to have changed. Um, the, the trees aren't in the same places. There has been some sort of shift here. I'm going to need you to mention something that I would actually recognize as being different, because so far it's just been a bunch of nature shit. Which to me is just like, yep, that's all still green. Yep. Fen, you're the first yeah. to realize it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... I'm confused as to this is when we leave the building we're currently in, so or the whole area. So essentially, when you area? when you come out of here, right? Oh, there. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. When when you exit the complex itself, okay. The path seems to be winding in a different direction. You feel like maybe the sun's in a different place than it was before, and not like time wise, but like latitudinally. Um, right, isn't this whole place just move around? Hasn't like physical location has no bearing on where the hell we are, right? It's all yeah. emotional, mental, psychic, yada yada yada. Yeah, I mean that's a pretty good definition of the Feywild. Yada yada yada. Um, could I try and I don't know nature check my way back to the monks? Yeah, make me a nature check. Tell me, like, how? What's your what's your thought process for that? How do you? Well, I feel like I'm. I have like a natural inclination towards, like, well, maybe not because it's a, a different plane, but I was thinking like towards the cardinal direction sort of thing, and that like I could try and just general um, 
what's it called when you like I don't know, words are escaping me right now you know when you're like on a road and you're yeah. like I know if I go this way it's at least parallel to the way that I was going sort of thing yeah uh, um I know you just that like general sense of direction and knowledge of place. sense of direction right right, yeah, right. Yeah. there we yeah. go so go ahead and make me the nature check with disadvantage okay yeah disadvantage submit okay yeah uh, surprisingly <laughs> um you do get turned around for a little while um and you realize it's there is a logic here it's just an incredibly more alien logic um to the way that things shift and move it's almost as if as the sun moves so does the nature around it wrap itself into the energy of the sun and moon right huh. uh and uh, the, the world seems to exist in a greater form of symbiosis than you're used to, where the energies that, that power this place through uh, the, the Feywild's sort of uh, solar and lunar cycle have an effect on the ground itself. And not just in the tides, like where you're from, or in the way that sunflowers move to follow sun, but in the, the physical reality of the world around you. Um... And as you start to move down the path, you're able to realize that, and this is, it's so matrixy, the Feywild is so matrixy, you are able to like will the path to shape itself to where you need to be. And it's, it's not intuitive at first, right? Because the nature here is very much not what you're used to. It's much more sentient in its own way. It's almost as if the roots of the trees as they connect create a greater mind, and all of the living things around you create kind of a singular intelligence. And it is in your ability to tap into that intelligence, uh, as primal as it may be, that you are able to find and navigate your way to a place that you recognize. Yay. Coming up, you see that large stand of trees. Uh, about midway up, 40 or 50 feet, are those same tree houses you saw before. You are back at the monastery. Is it empty or there's still there are people are still here? You do see movement up among the like rope bridges and things. Okay. Just we... 6,000 years later. <laughs> Do we recognize any of the people? Mm. Or we can't see them that clearly? As you approach, um, it, essentially the tree you remember using to, to ascend up into the, the monastery itself, uh, a, a guard kind of flits out from behind the bushes and you recognize this guard. Uh, it is a, a tiefling monk who was one of the two people guarding on the, the floor before. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> I don't remember what we were supposed to do. We were... We, we have cleared out. Yeah. Dude, would you like... <clears throat> yeah, they like so. you better than they like me. We well, have exercised the demons. <laughs> this uh, I guess we'd like to see... Cool. <laughs> The, the the monk in chief. I don't know. <laughs> oh, of course. Uh, have, you, you have been to... You, 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 you've been to the grave? And you... Yes. And you were able to meditate and, and find your center within the Feywild itself and become one with... Did we do that? <laughs> yes. I feel like we... Remember, yes, at the end did. of the last session, I said you feel this rush of energy come over you as you disable the yeah, electromagic yeah, yeah. uh, uh, magical device, and you feel as if you are more connected to this plane than you were before. Yay! Yes. Yeah, we did that. Yes. <laughs> we have pimped our rides. Excellent. Uh, I will take you now, if if you Thank wish, you. or if you need to rest before you wish to meet the master. I. What? Can we? Once we meet the master, does that mean that we gotta go? Because then, yes, I would like to rest first, but otherwise I'm fine with talking I'm, to him now. I'm sure we could provide you lodgings until such time as as you choose to leave, you as friends of the monastery, and looks at everyone, decidedly looks at everyone but Zed. 
<laughs> when he says that. That's fine. I'll camp in a tent outside. No, 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 no. I, Please, you can come up as well. well I you was, just... uh, I think I was in transit for part of this stuff. Did you fuck up something here? I talked. Uh, oh. Yeah. And it did not go over well? They did not appreciate me very much at all. <laughs> My sense of humor does not work very well outside of an urban, or, and particularly urbane setting. Um, I am droll, and they are... Serious. Uh, yes. They are... Uh, 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 everything that they say, they mean earnestly. Uh, and that does not work well for me. <laughs> then I will be keeping my mouth shut. Maybe. Probably not. <laughs> well, anyway. As long as you're not an ass to the grand... Uh, yeah, uh, Elise, you and me, we're gonna be we're gonna be double silent twins on this. <laughs> cool. Fen, cool. you're talking. <laughs> Great. Always what the I'm safest. Best <laughs> All right. Well, please follow me up the lift, and and we will take you to the master. Do you need food? I think we're okay. Some lembas bread. Some lembas bread, perhaps. Yes. Oh, come. All right. And he takes you into the this large sort of sequoia-like redwood um, that has the interior carved out of it. And yet, the tree is not dead in any way whatsoever. It's it's still very much a living piece. And and much like before, this rotating platform moves you up through the tree, and you find yourself sixty feet up walking out onto an open platform where you can see the, the forest floor below you. Uh, and moving about here and there are folks in the robes of this monastery, which are a blue uh, with a green sort of sashing on it. Um, all different races study here. And the the monastery itself is set, uh, set up to be centralized around one large sequoia, which you have all, except for at least, been in before, where, the, where folks live. That was the, the circle that you guys took, right, to go meet the master in his chambers. And then a number of outbuildings all connected in, through this network of rope bridges. It's the Swiss family hippies. It's the Swiss family hippies. That is not a lie. Oh yeah, this place looks like an ass ache. Anyway. The master is just finishing a, uh, a lesson now, and I will take you to the dojo. Thank you. I, I know, have we met this guy before? Yes. Like well, the party you, you the have party. not. Right, yes. my, right, the party has met this guy before. Yeah. Okay, because yeah, yeah. just in my mind, uh, like, the quintessential, like, uh, either like yoga teacher slash D-bag is about to just roll out out with his, like, deep Vs. It's just, that's all I'm I would thinking. argue that it's not that different, but <laughs> that's why they don't that's, like that's, me. That's, <laughs> okay. I'm on board. All right, uh, this tiefling, uh, and I hadn't really described the tiefling, two large uh, golden horns come up off of his head. He's, he's got a red cast to his face and this long blonde hair coming off the back uh, in the same robes as everyone else. He's got a very kind of life and, and, and fluid movement to him. Uh, takes you across a couple of the rope bridges. Uh, you circle around one of the sequoias. Uh, where the kind of feasting hall for the monastery is. And then uh, you find yourself in one of the larger trees. Um, as you walk in, the, it's the, the, the dojo here is carved out of the living tree itself. Uh, the mats uh, that the initiates here are working on are all, in fact, look like they're woven from the leaves and branches of these sequoias themselves. It seems like they take the stewardship of this place and their connection to it very seriously. Um, and just as you're walking in, the master goes, thank you, my students. Personal meditation is required at this time. Please move off and do what you must. And they bow. And about 20 students who were in there walk off, uh, walk out of the room past you guys off and kind of scatter off into the different rooms and things. Striding up to you at this point is an elderly high, high elf. What is an elder? Uh, an elderly elf, um, who uh, who's very much of the Eladrin sort of make. He is of the Feywild. He has these sweeping, pointed ears and uh, gray hair, but uh, an almost completely smooth face. There's no like wizened lines to it or anything. Uh, clean shaven, wearing the same robes as everyone else. The only thing that differentiates him is uh, a small necklace around his neck that has these red 
sorts of acorn beads on it that look to have these, these intricate carvings in them. Uh, and it's just almost up and around his throat, uh, but not quite a choker. And he, and he comes up and says, welcome back, my friends. Thank you. We were successful. How did you find the grave? Uh, we looked around in those or Yeah, there it was. <sighs> in what state or... was the grave? Oh. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, not in a very good state. Uh, it looked like it had been taken over by some sort of magic and uh, it it is all okay so since full we disclosure since I wasn't here last week it's hard oh, to we describe just, <laughs> we just, we just, what happened we just narrated like, collectively yeah yeah we, that sounds great what do, you, what do you mean it was we felt nothing here we felt no shift in the okay alright lithic goose thank you for the follow <laughs> We felt no, no disturbance here in that place, and it is sacred to so, us, and, and we are connected to it. And tell us the whole story. It was heavily defiled. It had been converted into essentially a, a, a hopper of sorts for souls to be gathered and transported across planes to some other guy. Um, it, uh, the whole place had been converted for the sole purpose of, uh, gathering, imprisoning, uh, and, uh, siphoning, uh, soul energy. So we corrected that problem. Uh, we disconnected the machine. Uh, we lost one of ours in the process. What machine? The one I described. Uh, what, what are you asking? You said it was built to, as if it was a building. Yes. Well, it's, uh, I mean, built meaning that it's purposely designed for this one specific task. So they, they by rearranging the geometry of the entire place, it would seem that that allows them to uh, uh, manipulate ley lines or something along those uh, along that path to uh, gather soul energy to them into this the the focal point, and then use the focal point to transport to elsewhere. You guys have had some interaction with him in the past, and he has never shown much emotion. Even when he stunned Zed, he, he, he there was like no emotion on his face when he did it. He was just like, you're being a, a, a turd, boop, right? And you actually see these flashes of like anger and concern cross his face as, as, you, as you go through this. He is obviously upset that something happened. He closes his eyes. I feel that you... I feel now... what you speak of, the, the defilement, but... I have made contact with that place for the last six days, and have felt no... Well, if I may say, the kind of person who's capable of putting together something that can siphon soul energy across planes in a constantly open connection and we know it's it's it, it's two-way communicative because when we disconnected it we definitely felt something in response uh as a negative reaction to what we had done um that's the kind of person who can probably mask what they're doing too so i would not if i were you really be too hard on myself um i'm sure you won't listen to me on that but I'm certain that there is really not much you could have done short of having spent, you know, the last however long that this has been occurring physically present in that location to have stopped him at the very moment that he showed up. And even then, you probably would be dead now. What damage to the graves themselves? What, what, what is the state of the, the, the cairns? 
It's not great. We put to rest what we could, but most of the remains were desecrated pretty heavily. Also, um, remember, we don't we don't know what it looked like before. Yeah, so that's our other you issue. Probably just, just oh, you do. Dispatch. Oh. Not the you... way that you guys. I mean, you're asking for a more in-depth analysis than I think we are able to provide you with. I would say it would be best to dispatch your best Zen yeah. garden sweepers to go. Correct. Yeah. And Volta will pipe up too and say it was almost completely destroyed from the way it was before. It is not not the same at all. They deconstructed the cairns and and created buildings out of them. And you you see again this like his his fists ball up because we will is is the present still there? Is it have you? Eliminated. You've eliminated it. Yes, we, it's gone. We, we severed the connection. Yeah. And what dangers remain in that graveyard? None that we're aware of. But I would send people with weapons just to be sure. I mean, we don't leave a lot of. We don't leave much living wherever we go. Yeah, we're fairly thorough. Okay. We did describe eight, some, the, the weird no kill, like plant overkill. heart thing. I mean, we did describe the plant heart thing that was pulsing in the center of it. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The tunnels and all that. We will... This monastery has stood for the last 1,500 years here. Of By your what? reckoning. Okay, thank you. <laughs> the Dale reckoning? <laughs> yes. And has taken that graveyard as part of its stewardship that whole time. Ancients live there, and they must be restored. And it is not your responsibility to do so, nor will I ask you to. It is a new task, a new undertaking, something that will give us at least some new meaning for a time, and in that, at least, it's a blessing. Can I Who... recommend something for you? What's that? Some form of signal fire or magical alarm. <laughs> it's remote. It's difficult for you to sense, and while you have mystical senses to it, it's possible that eyeballs would help. You, you understand, like this place, that also shifts in, in time and space. It sure. is the nature uh, of the Feywild. That explains why it was difficult to find the way back here. We, while we are able... While we know the right trods to make our way to it, and you were obviously able to make your way back, that doesn't mean that we could see a signal fire from it, even if it was only a five-minute walk away. Right. It is, I, I it is my connection. Thought, I don't think he meant a literal signal fire. I think he meant just a more... Yeah, more like a... Wave. But, it, but especially, maybe from your point, maybe from your point of view, the, the effects and ripples of whatever went on there haven't actually hit here yet? Which is, which is why you didn't know? Could have rerouted yes. it. And he was able to mask it. You, 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 you have mentioned a singular person who you believe to be involved in this as well. Do you, do you have a name? <laughs> Whose name? Uh, I Brack. forgot. Uh, Aserak. Aserak. His face goes blank. You do not. <laughs> Thank you, Lydia. Uh, you do not know who Aserak is. No. No. Uh, no. Nope. Nope. Not a big player back where we're from, or at least not a known player. <laughs> Aserak is maybe not the original Lich, but the eldest known and most powerful of them. He has made it his sole purpose in life to create deity. His hubris sorry, is to create what? Deity, gods. His his hubris is so great that he believes himself to be the father of gods. That there, in his undeath, while he could raise himself up, it is far greater for him, and a far greater task to create gods, evil gods, who consume worlds. Uh. Are we going to have to go destroy Asshat's Furylactory again? Any of his work that I might be familiar with? 
I would not... What, you are from Toriel, from Theron, yes? Yeah. Yes. There are rumblings of, of, of his actions there, but nothing that would be within your history books, no. He plays across the material plane and the others. I know that he has been to and been active in Faerun deep in your history, but he is devious and, and covers his tracks well. Interesting. Cool. Huh. This is a far greater crisis than I first imagined. Even if this is destroyed, do you... So this, this was sending souls to some other point in the multiverse. Yeah. I know it is not your task, and I would not ask you to take it up, but I must do more research on this and understand why this place was chosen, because I am sure it is not the only one. Yeah, we'll, we'll put a pen in it. A <laughs> little busy right now, but, but you know, we can get back. Thank you for this. I, I must meditate upon it and, and do some more studying. And with that, he dismisses you. Okay, thanks, bye. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> Namaste. Just, just the, uh, I look around for Dharma initiative signs anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Namaste, bruh. Uh... You're gonna get that chick to do the domestic with me. <laughs> uh, the sorry. tiefling, whose name is Carrick, uh, lets you guys know that there uh, we have lodging. Carrick, K E R R A K, if you care. Um, if he you lets care. You, if you care. Carrick. Um, he lets this Carrick, if you're nasty. <laughs> uh, he lets you guys know that there is lodging available here and food, should you need it, should you need to stay. Resting seems good. Yes. I mean, we do have, like, you know, a timeline. We we do, but right now, I, like, at this very moment, I would be useless in a fight. I, I, I feel like um, that's... I mean, I would not be useless, but I, I, I'm barely over half health. So, since, yeah. you know, you only have one tank now, so... <laughs> yeah. Pish. So, rest... Rest. Uh, you are given simple rooms, uh, th two to a room. Uh, it's these very simple sorts of cots that sit on the, uh, that kind of just sit a, a foot or two above the floor. Uh, they're made out of the same wrapped sort of branch and leaf material as the mats that people were sleeping on. Uh, and there's just a single book stand in there, uh, all still carved out of the, the, the living trees. And so there's kind of these sweeping arcs to things and, and these like wrapped sorts of architectural pieces that make it all feel very alive and very kind of attuned to this one place. But otherwise your night passes uneventfully and uh, you're given a, a simple but very filling sort of repast of, uh, it's kind of like a local berry mix with some essentially oatmeal. Uh, this, it was filling, if nothing else. And the day breaks. I'm not fixing it. <laughs> so I didn't funny. break it, don't look at me. <laughs> That's the, the dumbest joke. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. So what we do. <laughs> you win, Mike. <laughs> <sighs> it was all about the timing. Okay. Um, well, I wake up. Um, I have just a wonderful bowel movement from the food. <laughs> <laughs> just, a, just a real smooth shit. And, uh, <laughs> gather up You're my off. things. Do they offer us a cleanse of any kind? Hiking <laughs> <laughs> Lonics of five gold apiece. I pass on wheatgrass. What, what was that movie? What was that movie about with, the, with Kellogg and the, all the corn yeah. flake eating? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just our, our, our eighth enema of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Give oh, him a real uh, sense of accomplishment. Welcome <laughs> to Wellsville, right? Or yes. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 Yep. 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 Uh... Volta, as you guys kind of get together for breakfast, Volta comes up to you and goes, 
my friends, it's... I was ripped from my home. And my friends died, and then I found you, and you were my friends, but I am home again. And it seems there is work to be done. I, I feel that I must stay. Brand crushes her in a big bear hug. Mm. She gives Thanks, you a like... big bear hug back. I feel bad because there's more work to be done with you, but this is this is where I, I grew up. This is this is the place I protected and it's been defiled. I feel that I have to I have to stay and help. Our fight was never really your fight. This is your fight. This is fine. Good luck. There's a lot to be done. She uh, takes the wraps that you guys found off of her hands um, that are an, one of the artifacts, right, that you guys found. And uh, she puts them down on the table and goes, I don't... I believe these... I believe these should belong to you. I think uh, I will be okay without them. That, that makes sense. We, we might find a use for them. Thank you. you are very kind. You are a good boon companion. So are you, Brent. Thank you. We're also going to need, like, roughly 300,000 gold back from your... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, actually, uh, to be entirely honest, uh, your... Uh, does, does money have a use here? Yes, uh, gold, we use it to trade with some of the others. Okay, so in that case, then, your take from some of what we've been doing... Uh, without doing a whole heck of a lot of math right now. Uh, hang on one sec. You should be looking at... Okay, so at the very least, uh, here's 6,000 gold. I will take 600. Keep the rest for yourselves. Okay, sweet. Thanks. I don't need uh, that much. Would really fight on that one? <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. No? I, hey, offer. <laughs> Refused. Done. <laughs> <laughs> I, we, some spending money is good but you have a keep to maintain and I will be back and I have a dojo there I will come visit good use it to to make that land better and hell the way time works here you'll probably be there yesterday anyway <laughs> that's true <laughs> okay. Wait, oh my god what? Sean just laughed at me politely in character to humor me that is so weird. Yeah, but Brand is super confused now by that comment. Yesterday? But yesterday was yesterday. Today's the day. I'm confused. I throw jam a colored ball. Jam tomorrow. That's jam every Ooh, shiny! Day. Okay, thank God. Who's gonna hurt himself? <laughs> I should tell you, there's no way to get to the elemental plane of fire from here that I know of. Um, I know you have an exit back to uh, Toril, but I don't... I don't know how you would get to your next destination from here. I'm sure there oh, is a sure way, I just don't know what it is. Thing. I'm sure there's some sort of terrible thing we have to go into. Okay. And she'll It'll sit down and just eat her porridge. Yeah, we need to go. Yeah. I'm out of- I'm porridged out. As so you guys- I haven't had ale in like two days. <laughs> Wow, Go I wonder what your hangover must be like, yeah. Just DTs for days. <laughs> yeah. 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 Brand's hands yeah. trembling. Yeah. <laughs> uh. All right, so as you guys uh, get up to leave, uh, you are, are, are given a goodbye by Volta and by the Master and by Carrick, uh, who all three walk you out and take the just lift. Just be sure we're gone. Just, yeah. <laughs> Especially you, Zed. Uh, and, uh, Don't let the goodbye, Karen. Goodbye, Ancient One. Lords. <laughs> just the most of all Scarecrow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they will see you down the lift and uh, say goodbye to you on your way. Yeah, Ernest isn't something that we do well. No. It's a bunch of lawful good months. Bye. Follow you the group. I'm Follow sure we'll see you group. again at some point. When it's thematically appropriate. <laughs> when it's time for the side quest. Let us know when you, 
Let us know when the MacGuffin gets delivered. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, what are you doing? So she said there is no way to get to where we need to go from here. There's no way to get to the plane of fire. The you have the 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 ritual stone that Elminster gave you that will allow you to get back to Waterdeep. Right. So do we go back to Waterdeep and then go to the plane of fire? I mean, I, I feel like Elminster could probably send us there. If we yeah, I think that's what we have to do. Yeah. All right. All right. So just a review. We we have now traveled through the portal. We've attuned ourselves with the next raid. We are now ready to... <laughs> yes. Yes. Excellent. We don't have right. to turn something in and wait a week? Okay, just making no, sure. No, no, there's no downtime. There's no build time. There's no... Yeah, you're good. Um, all right. So... As you guys I need three neurods. I'm three neurods shy <laughs> oh my of being God. Build this quest. <laughs> okay, you guys place the ritual stone down on the ground as you did to, to come here. And uh, Zed, you were given the proper incantation to be able to make this happen. At least wasn't yep. there at the time, and you were the only really arcane Ooh. sort of caster. Uh, uh, and okay, are we ready? Humana? 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 Hey! And with the hey... Uh, <laughs> you find yourself back in the same grove where you first did the ritual. About 15 uh, miles outside of Waterdeep. The kid's back in the grove again. <laughs> Not a year goes by. Not a year! <laughs> Is that a reference? I don't know. Uh, I, get, I don't get it, and neither does Frank. back on yeah. the S yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a mall rats reference. That's that's some deep, oh, okay. deep tracks it's right on the there. Escalator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a couple years since I've seen. Welcome to the Broken Throne, where it's all about the jokes and banter, ladies. Oh, <laughs> man. I stand by what I said. We are awesome. Yes, all right. I love us too. So where where exactly are? Because I, I came a different way, so I don't know where we are now. Uh, well, hey, we do you know who Elminster right? is? We're fifteen miles away. Fox said. Yeah, you're in the, so, the Druid's Grove that he had to take you out to. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. so yeah. at least you know who uh, Elminster is? Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're going to go talk to him. All right, All right cool. so teleportation circle. Vroomp. Vroomp. And we go to Waterdeep. To Waterdeep. And we go to, I believe, the temple where we are expecting to see Elminster. Yeah, he'd probably be in the castle. He'd okay. probably be in Waterdeep Keep. Lost oh, hey, if we go mind. and visit Beric, should we pull Vale out and leave her in that same area? Yeah, that <laughs> would be a good idea. <laughs> Just, I mean, if they're already taking care of Beric. Man, uh, the by the end of all this, of this they're, world, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, they're the, gonna, it's the Church they're gonna of name a, more. They're going to name a wing after us. after. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I have to believe that they're going to start getting a little annoyed at me constantly bringing bodies that are uh, just... <laughs> for souls that are not passing on. Right. <laughs> hey, I found another soulless body. Just, this just one's not dead. Know. <laughs> Should be, but isn't. I am wandering around. We are like collectively the group is wandering around with a gem with like I don't know how many souls in it right now. <laughs> yeah, which I'm thinking maybe we ought to leave here too, but do you really want to? Maybe... Leave no, that see, lying around. See, we can leave okay, that in our so, keep. So here is the issue, right? Oh yeah, because that place is super safe. Wherever yeah. it is opens us up to the possibility of of GM fuckery. Okay, like it doesn't really matter where it is. If it's on, uh, if it's on one of us, then maybe someone in the city of brass fucking steals it. If it's on, uh, uh, like if it's in the church, or in our keep. Then you know some agent of of uh, uh, Aserac like sneaks in and takes it in the night, and we don't even get to interact. If fucking Elminster has it, maybe one of his uh, you know like uh, uh, apprentices. Stop or something. giving Sean ideas. He has yeah. these ideas. He already has them. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, at least in our keep, we have like a, a contingent of guards and the interns and stuff. Yeah, we, we, we'll have someone that we can blame that isn't us, and I, I, I mean, like yeah. that as a comfort. <laughs> people know. I mean, if nothing else, Pam is a reliable person. Although Theoretically, it's more difficult. If we leave it there, and they wreck stuff in the process of stealing it, I think you guys have to pay to fix it. 
Ooh. Let's keep it away from the keep. <laughs> <laughs> um, or actually, isn't, well, isn't, isn't it? Don't we still? Don't you guys still have the uh, the one poor guard that's making a sl his slow boat ride back to the keep? <laughs> He's gonna show up just in time for like the soul gem to show up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. I finally made it here. <laughs> oh fuck. I want to hear Portal about that. To a hell dimension? Yes. I hear that. That's what. That's, that needs to be. There's the spinoff. That's the spinoff comic book of our adventures. Is that guy's <laughs> fucking life? <laughs> <laughs> that poor bastard. I don't even remember his name. Shit. Anyway, I have it somewhere. All right. It's in my so, notes. That's all that really matters. Are we gonna flip a coin, or are we gonna just say keep Let's... it? Are we? Do we feel safer leaving it in your guys' library or with someone? Well, so how about this? Let's let's give the body over to the church. Step one. And then step two, let's go talk to Elminster and ask him what he thinks we should do with the gem. Because, um, frankly, if he knows that Asarak is involved, there's a very high likelihood that he knows who Asarak is, even though we did not. Um, and so he might have some ideas about what to do. Black rock. Oh my god! Okay. Uh, uh, all right. So, what's your deal? What, uh, tell me what you're first. Gonna Go talk and talk to Elminster. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, I love we that we're in a game. Body. Yeah. Uh, as, as you uh, as, as you dump the body, they seem a little weird. A little weird about the fact that you dumped the body there. A little bit. Uh, we we explain. Yeah. We grease their palms is what we do. <laughs> they look By at them and go, "It's another not no, dead one, gauntlet. man." There, there's a ritual that I am aware of, but I do not currently personally know that it's used to preserve dead bodies. Is there any way you guys can perform that? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yes, of course, of course, of course, of course. We shall preserve this flesh that should, by all rights, have made its way to Kelimvor. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. I've already, I know. Okay. I, I'm, trust me, I'm, I'm aware of the difficulty here, morality-wise. <laughs> But from the body, Vale's soul was untimely ripped. It's not. I am trying. How do you to know write... it's untimely? The priest says. Yeah, we, we don't know what be... her time because was. Because it should have yeah. just gone on. It should. Well, have no, been on sucked. that I agree. It by the have way, been sucked out. This priest needs a name now because we're having a philosophical debate. Um, Fred, Master Fred Garling. His name is now Garling because whatever. Uh, it says. Uh, yeah, I mean, yes. The, the fact that her soul is gone and not moved on is a problem, but her flesh should also move on. It's a double deal, right? We don't tend to preserve these things because there is a cost to be paid. I know. And I'll pay it, but in the short term this is it kind of needs to happen this way at least for now. Um, but How long would you like us, because we have to reapply that spell pretty, pretty regularly. <laughs> it's not permanent. <laughs> It lasts for like a month or some shit, doesn't it? Well, yeah. What, what is, what's it called? Hang on. Does anybody remember the name of the spell? No, not a It's not like head. preservation or something. It's uh, like a cantrip or a level one. Gentle repose is all I can Oh, think gentle repose. I, I think I actually yeah. think that's right. But that's the one that makes sure they don't come back. They can't come back as a zombie, though. I thought. Uh, for the duration, the target is protested from decay and can't become undead. You, you just froze. Uh, target is protected. Can you? Am I still frozen? No, no, you're good now. Okay. Target is protected from decay and can't become undead. It's ten days. It okay. is a second level ritual. Okay. So, here's a thousand gold. Okay. Use that as a reserve bank. Thirty days. Whatever. No, I'm kidding. Of course. We will, whatever, with a thousand whatever. gold, we can care for both. And, and so here's the deal. Listen to me. Yes. Don't hang on. Okay. Whatever whatever is left that we don't use by the time we get both of these bodies back up and walking around, because it's going to happen. Whatever is left. Uh, hopefully not in an undead way. Well, uh, no. Possibly in an undead what, way. Whatever is left goes to the church. Okay. Okay. And we will happily watch over them until Thank such you. time. Especially because we don't actually need to do anything. So, right. By the way, we I've have to cast gem... this spell and make right, sure her body doesn't decay. Days. And she takes a bed of other people who we're caring for. She doesn't need a bed. No, just slide her. 
The slider <laughs> underneath. Just the stack her up in the firewood. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> Barracks on that cot. Just slide her under the under Barracks cot. Wow. What <laughs> happened to you? <laughs> Who hurt you? It's the body. The soul is the important part. <laughs> How many times? Well, okay, how about well, this? Well, in that no. case, maybe we should Fleshing. be having a discussion about what kind of a better body to put the soul into. <laughs> <laughs> like a we rock had giant or something? I think we had this discussion when, when I think when Beric first got what the other. No, 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 no. It was when Fen learned whatever reincarnate or whatever. Oh, yeah. Beric is a squirrel? <laughs> <laughs> and that is that is why Brand has a living will. <laughs> if I come back as a elf or something, you're supposed to kill me again. Just keep rolling and try it again. again. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> I love you guys. I love you guys. All right. So, uh, thank you, brother, darling. You're darling, darling. I know. Nice. Uh, let's go, and I can't believe I get to say this, let's go talk to Elminster. Cool. All right, so you guys make your hey, way over to Elminster. Uh, hey, Mr. Waterdeep Elm. Castle, uh, which is actually called, like, Waterdeep Keep or something? I don't know. Um, hang on, it's right here. I think it's actually called Castle Waterdeep. You guys make your way over to Castle Waterdeep, and the same two guards who are always standing up there in the middle of the day uh, are still there. And at this point, they just recognize you and go, uh, uh, you're, you're, you're here for Elminster, aren't you? Sup, bros? Yeah. So actually, what we're here times? for you this time. Yeah, <laughs> we come for you. <laughs> you, come, you come for me this time. What did, what did I do? You want to go out no, for I a pizza? Want, yeah, just want to make sure uh, you're having a good yeah. day. Yeah, that sounds good. I get off shift in uh, three hours. No, we're right. going to be in the city of Brass by then. All right, later. Oh, okay. Brand gives him a fist bump. <laughs> Makes it explode. I, I want to make a reverse pickpocket roll. Hang on. Oh. <laughs> See, there is good in you. <laughs> you. I on, sense me... it. There is still good in you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let me see, where's, okay. I, I actually, this is the first time I'm pulling up my character sheet because I hadn't needed it before. Um, I am very bad at sleight of hand. <laughs> That's okay, you just play it off. <laughs> Here, uh, $5. I was just trying to grab your ass. Um, <laughs> fuck, 18. Yeah, uh, what are you trying to put in there? Uh, 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 five gold. Five gold. All right, as he walks you in, uh, you're able to kind of brush up against him. Uh, you go through the large front courtyard that's got those very finely appointed gardens on either side of it with a castle kind of rising up uh, in front of you. It's a very German-feeling castle, right? So it's got, like, the pointed kind of crenellations on the top, or pointed sort of tops to the towers, uh, and a large exterior wall. The whole thing is either whitewashed white or has been painted white, depending on the portion of it, as it's been going through repairs and things like that. Um, you walk into the large marble foyer uh, where a new, numerous functionaries and folks are, are skirting around doing business. And he takes you into that same very comfortable waiting room uh, with, a chi with a, the like really lushly appointed chairs and tapestries on the walls and a roaring fireplace. Still all marble uh, and gold filigree in places uh, and these like rich red sorts of couches. And he's says, we will get to Elminster for you as soon as we can. As always, we cannot guarantee that he will be here quickly, um, but we will let him know you are here. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hey. Uh, yes. And as you brush by him, you put the five gold in. That's, yeah. I got I got, I got caught up in my description. No, 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 that's fine. Yeah. Um, as he's walking out, though, I look at him and I'm like, hey, I heard rumor that there might be some pickpocket children uh, rolling around. You should, uh, you should check yourself later. Make sure that everything is intact. I will. And I'll, I'll wrap them upside the head too if they try. Yeah. All right. Later, buddy. Later. And he walks back out very smartly. As I realize now that I'm probably responsible for child abuse, but you know what? <laughs> yeah, you know, whatever. It's cool. Take the bad with the good. Yeah. F it. On on balance, it's a wash, so I'm fine. 
Okay. Uh, you guys have anything you guys want to talk about before Elminster comes? As a party? Yeah, I think it's good. Good <laughs> Sold! Uh, it takes about a half an hour what, for what, what are you going to do with your portion of Barrow's soul? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Elminster comes walking in, and as you guys remember, he is a, a, a fascinating-looking individual. Is that on the, really on the map level? No, it's not. There we go. Uh, he is a fascinating-looking individual. Uh, move to top. To front. Boink. Boink. And then, doink. Uh, he, uh, and he is appointed exactly like this as he comes walking in. He's got, it, except the pipe's kind of hanging out of his mouth. Um, and he goes, hello, my friends. Welcome back. How was the Feywild? I see her. It was not... wild, man. Wait. One, two, three, four. Yeah. And one of you is different. So you're missing one, and one of you is different. Yeah. Looking at Elise. Um. Hello. And 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 actually, you're actually carrying the the emerald, right? I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm just checking. He. For a moment, just kind of bears, my personal wallet. bears down on you. He his eyes kind of bear down on you for a second, and then shakes it off. And what what happened? Well, it was not the resting camping outing that we were <laughs> perhaps hoping for. Uh. Okay, here's the really short version. Yes. Uh, Volta decided to stay behind because there's a lot of work to do after we got done cleansing and attempting to fix up some of the issues that were brought about by a soul siphoning arcane, uh, 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 arcane machine that uh, sends soul energy across the plains that was built by some asshole named Aserac. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, what? Yeah, no, so hang on, bear with me because there's more. Um, we also uh, unfortunately lost uh, Vale um, because uh, curiosity and cats and something something yada yada punchline. Um, Got there. Yeah, but <laughs> overall, uh, she touched a thing she shouldn't have touched, and her soul is now in that gem with however many other people's souls. We brought what her body gem? back. The gem that I'm sure. Hang on. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, we, we left her body at the church uh, next to barracks um, so we got that covered uh, we did fix the, the graveyard issue and the soul machine we disconnected uh, Aserac seemed generally unhappy about that fact and the, there's a gigantic soul gem jewel, jewel thing that uh, Elise here is carrying. Elise by the way is uh, Barrick's sister oh, um, Nice to meet you. Yeah she's, she's pretty cool uh, a little difficult to get to know but no, it's all right. Uh, I've been told the same thing about myself. It's okay. And uh, yeah, so she's she's holding on to this gem that we pulled out of this giant machine that was used to you know send the energy of souls across the plains to fuel Aserac's evil designs. That about cover it? I think I think that's most of it. Uh, you for a moment he's just silent. Uh, he walks over to this uh, kind of wood table with uh, that's highly polished. It has these glass tankards on it um, with like they're very very like chiseled, very fancy glass with these amber liquids. And he he pop, pops one open and like pours himself a drink. He says, "Does anyone else want to drink?" Yes. Yes. Sure. Also, meat. Yes, meat. It's been a while, man. Yes, you hang on know, one moment. You don't Porta! know what there. Wait, you know, like a little sausage platter, a little, some cheeses. We need food. Meats, cheeses, bread. Thank no, no you. bread. No, no I want bread. of any kind. I, I want <laughs> bread. I, I would like okay. some bread all with right, my meats right, and cheeses. All right, all right. That's, I'm that's going fine. to eat some. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with me eating <laughs> bread? Sorry, I look. You, you got to understand what it was like over there. Okay. It's... Here, then have it, enjoy this nice oat beer. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he, he pours you each uh, a, 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 like a four-fingered draft of brandy. 
and, and sets it down in front of each of you. He plops himself down on the edge of one of the couches. And you, you've never seen this before, but he, he, he puts his pipe down and he kind of bends over and he starts rubbing his like legs and just thinking for a moment. You know how you see sometimes people like, Ugh. yeah, they're doing that. He's doing that thing. Um, He's got a beard. Uh, he has a beard. That's stage two thinking, man. Yes. Uh. So, my friends, you have told me something that I would never have wanted to hear. I'm just going to start with that. Aserak was believed to be dead for the last 150, 200 years. There was reports that he was vanquished uh, on another material plane and that his phylactery was destroyed. So either this is a holdover from his previous activities or he's back and at it again. Uh, is it possible to have more than one phylactery? Like perhaps, uh, I don't know, something like a horcrux? Yeah, uh, what? does he have maybe seven phylactery? <laughs> <laughs> I do- I, I don't know what it's that was, but... A small tra- child. <laughs> <laughs> Check the babies! Check all the babies! Is your name actually Dumbledore, or...? <laughs> <laughs> it's... The only reason he could be siphoning souls that I am aware of, and it, it fits his motivation, is to be creating a god. Any one in particular? Just uh, make a new one of his design. This is uh, this is this is what he does. He believes he is greater even than the immortals. Being the father of gods is been his goal, and one he has succeeded at in the past for a millennia. How was, an, was he then defeated? Brave adventurers, much like yourself. Oh, God damn it. Incredibly powerful, incredibly well equipped. Far beyond well, your good. capabilities. Oh, I was at say. the moment. Although you do seem to be growing in, in expertise and power as I know you, and I'm glad to see that. Laid down their lives to end his reign on a on a realm called Greyhawk. Far across the astral seas from here. I must, I must do more research. And you must tell me every detail that you know. I know you have plans now, but when you come back and and when our current troubles are resolved, perhaps we will have enough information to find out what's actually going on. This Asarak, if he has built these things already, it means that his plans are well developed, but he is he is unliving and his, his work takes time and you have been gone four weeks but to him that's really? but a moment so, To us it was but a moment God, I hate the Feywild Alright It is It is of utmost importance that we know where it is what? Sorry? You of the utmost importance that we know where these, uh... This... This was shipping souls to. Okay, he froze for other people, right? Am yeah. I still frozen? Mm, uh, no, you're not. Now, now you're fine. Okay. It yeah, something's going on... That, that we know where these souls are being telegraphed or sent to. I think once we find that... We will have more of an idea of what he's planning on trying to accomplish. Oh, man. Too bad we didn't have Vale touch that, and then we could go find her soul. <laughs> May I see the gem? Yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're a little go. uncertain, actually, as to what to do with it while we go to the City of Brass. Here you go. As he takes it from you, he... <laughs> crumples over and dies <laughs> no. as um, his soul is removed from his body. Oh, dang! Um, go back to the church and go, we got another one! <laughs> Elminster, no! Uh, you see that he is able to hold it in his bare hand. Um, 
This is an incredibly dangerous artifact. It is far better to destroy it and allow the souls to go free. It itself contains the souls of hundreds of not thousands of sentient beings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is essentially a spiritual bomb. Yeah, and we very much would like to allow those souls to go free. The only issue is that Veil's in there. Oh. Well, that does complicate things, but... And I don't mean to be heartless. But this item would, should it be mishandled, flatten this city. Uh, okay, so, okay. So here's, here's my thought process right now. Um, and I'm just going to kind of talk this out with you guys, because uh, I could use the assistance. So... I don't like letting this thing stay anyway, because souls should cross over. That's what souls are supposed to do. Souls should cross over. They should they should move on, right? So already, I'm somewhat morally opposed to the existence of this thing. Veil being inside of it is sort of tipping that a bit, and I'm willing to put up with a certain level of discomfort in the short term because of that. But, Elminster, you're telling us that this thing also poses just a general existential threat to other lives in the area? Only should it be mishandled in the way that any tool would be mishandled. Should... Should the wrong folks get their hands on this, it could be used to devastating effect. Or to be used to power a deity, as it was already attempting to do. So what would you suggest? I suggest we destroy it. We'll get there. Um, what potential issue would that have to the souls inside of it? Would they just be wandering lost? They would go to their gods. Oh, okay. Or at least I believe I'm no, I'm no, uh, I'm no religious person, but I, I believe that a soul wandering free tends to make its way to where it needs to be. Just not necessarily back to our plane and a body. With the right magics, possibly. But the the process of disassembling the magic in this to allow the souls to go free is expensive and arduous and dangerous and long. It is essentially disarming an explosive device. So even getting rid of it is going to take a lot, not just saving uh, a veil. Yes, in, in the short term, I believe I have a place to keep it safe, but there is a magic to possession. And There's a magic I, what? To possession, to ownership over great and powerful magic items. It is not mine unless its owner freely gives it. And he places it back down on the table. Don't pick that up with your hands now. I'm sorry, you keep... Yeah, my internet's now. shit today, I'm sorry. He says, don't pick that up with your hands now. Thanks. Yeah. Well, it was fine to handle before. Why can't I... <sighs> Pesky Elminster. Okay. I'm gonna go pee. I'll be <laughs> I need to think about this. Okay, we're we gonna take a quick break. Sounds good. Okay, let's take a quick break. We will be right back. Mm. Yes. That's not right. Once I find the right thing to click on, there Beat we go. Cookie. I need a cookie. I'll be right back. We'll be right back. We'll be back in a minute. A Bye. Cookie.
we're back! All right, when we last left our intrepid adventurers, we were talking to Elminster about what the hell to do with a, a gem full of souls and the possible existential threat of somebody out there creating a god by siphoning souls from places all over the multiverse, while also trying to figure out how to get to the city of Brass to save a single soul, that of their dotty paladin, Barrack. So that's the choice that we have. We can keep it safely for now. I can start working on it to destroy it. You can keep it in your possession. I trust you not to do anything rash with it, I hope. The the real issue is we're, we're traveling to a, a plane of evil. Yes. To well, a city of concentrated evil. Yes. One more reason we should wander around with the uh, large bomb in our pocket. Maybe yep. not that bomb? Like, mm, just seems like a bad plan. Didn't it work out very well to to Leia, you know? Yes. So the real plan, the plan is that we're gonna leave the stone with... What the fuck's his name? Elminster, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, I agree with that plan. And the, oh, okay, so hopefully the plan is that we can go get Barrack and come back with enough time left to be able to be like, all right, cool, now let's build this thing to be able to get her soul out? Yeah, well, her thing doesn't seem to be as time-limited as Barrack is. Right, but it, I mean, it's time-limited in the sense that it's bad for that thing to exist. And she does use air quotes around bad. <laughs> yes, exactly that. Well, um, I have secured you transportation to... Spelljammer? Indeed. Woo! We found uh, a, an yeah. unused cargo ship that we can... a shuttlecraft that we can is, use to get is back it, to... Is this ship for sale? No, it's the Spirit of the North. It's the one that you were on before. Uh, Having finished your shakedown cruise, it's back here in dock. I was really hoping that we could rename it the Boat Boat Boat. <laughs> you already have a boat, boat, boat. That could be problematic, yes. <laughs> ship, ship. No, no, no. It, it's ship, ship, ship. <laughs> ah, much, much better, oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Oh, are we going to have to, like, paint it red and put corpses on the outside of it to get it in? Um, I don't believe so. No, not so. corpses, just bodies with no souls. Transiting to an we elemental plane those. will require some travel through astral space. However... Once you make the transit itself, it's just like landing here. If you were on, say, a flying carpet or an airship, you just touch down. You just have to make the transit. Right, but I, I meant more about thematically, do we show up in a ship and it's like evil town? Don't they want us to fly an evil flag like pirates? Like you can't just roll into... Oh, they just I don't would... care. I, I have been to the City of Brass twice before. By the way, first of all, it is huge. It is an order of magnitude larger than Waterdeep. It is a sprawling city of slaves and markets and djinn called Afriti, which are these large fire djinn. They're essentially elementals uh, who run the place. Uh, but you will find all sorts of people there. And it is a place of law. It's just a place of evil law. Slavery is legal, and it is legal to catch slaves of those who do not have citizen status within the city. And there's quite a so profit being... we have to get that then? Or we just have to run and hope uh, we don't get caught? It is... It will be dangerous for you to be there not being citizens, but... See... The slaves who get taken have to be subdued. And the Azers and uh, Geth, for the most part, who do the slave catching, probably couldn't stand up to you. Perhaps. The Afriti are a real problem. They are at least, as could take any one of you on, a single one. As a group, of course, you would be stronger. But they are, they are quite powerful beings who, who uh, make up the primary denizens of the city. However, I was going to say, simply land on the plane and walk to the gates. All you must do is request entrance and, and pay whatever fee 
it is required for you to enter. Is that going to be in money? Or is that going to be in, like, a happy memory or something? I imagine it will be in gold. Um, it depends... I know the current caliphate that runs the city is very... is a profit-oriented sort of mercantile combine, and not so much into arbitrary execution of cruelty so much as using the law for their own benefit. Now, they do enforce the law with an iron fist. And mm. as a non-citizen, you will have no rights. Might makes right. Good luck with that. <laughs> I do wish you luck with that. Mm. Okay, so... What else do we... I mean, I, just beside the... I mean... I assume one does not simply, like, walk around on the plane of fire, though, right? It, it's not... No. Um, as long as you don't stay there too long, your possessions will not immediately combust. The plane of fire is an elemental location that exemplifies fire in its most elemental form. Uh, the, the land is made of obsidian and cracked brown and red rock and lakes of lava and the clouds are of sulfur. It is very much a place of, of fire in all of its forms. However, it is possible to transverse across the land itself without suffering too much undue harm, as Denison's not accustomed to it, I would imagine your your greatest vulnerability traveling to the city itself would just be simple exhaustion from the, the high amounts of heat. And any elementals you may encounter upon the way, of course, but in terms of the place itself, you would be looking for firestorms that could pop up and low-lying clouds of choking sulfur and quick lava and things like that. But, Sorry, so, quick lava? Yes, quick lava. Is, it's much like quicksand, except there's a, a, a thin crust over some of the land, right? And should you step on it, below is simply lava. So just lava. Like the floor is lava. Yeah. But it, it, could, it doesn't look like lava. No, uh, there's a thin crust over top of it that makes it look like yeah. that. You'll, you'll mainly find it in more of the dry bed areas. You'll see the cracked stone uh, or the cracked dirt, right? Uh, it is in areas like that where you would find quick lava. But I, I don't imagine you'll have to do much traversing. I, you will not be able to dock directly in the city at one of the airship docks, but there's no law outside of the walls of the city of Brass. So you could land near it, Okay. It just depends on how circumspect you want to be in your approach. Who's going to be driving us there? Uh, I don't understand. We know how to operate it. Uh, no, I, I have a trained crew who will take you and, and wait for your return. I was going to go with, but given the new information that you have given me, I feel that I must stay and continue research here. Cool. Cool. Oh, this will be the <laughs> third flight of the Spirit of the North. And so it is its first official non break-in voyage. It is it, it is prepared and ready to go. It's already done been broke. Yes, you were on the first flight, in fact. We can leave it yeah. your convenience or the the ship is ready to leave it your convenience as well. Um you just Whatever business you need to take care of beforehand. <clears throat> Good at business. <clears throat> um, cool. Uh, okay. Do we have any of that? Well, I, I should probably reconvene. Don't think I need to do anything, but... I'm good. Let's go. Oh, right now? I got some drink in me. Ready to go. <laughs> oh, some great drink. And just to be clear, are you leaving the stone here, or are you taking it with you? Please keep it. Vote. Okay, fine. Al Elise was carrying it, and as I said, there's a magic to possession. I feel that she does have a voice in this. <laughs> I mean, if you'd like to keep it, Elise, I'd stop you. 
<laughs> well, I mean, I other than its inherent nature as a fascinating magical artifact of horrifying power, I don't have any attachment to Veil, vale, though you do. You're, I mean, if you want to leave it, I don't care. Okay. You How do you it. feel, Zed? I think we should leave it here with Omenster. I I just see too many... Say the person who's carrying it falls into, a, I don't know, a pool of quick lava. lava. <laughs> I suspect at least we'll be flying on her broom the entire time. I'm sorry. Then it flies into a firestorm. I mean, look, I'm just saying, it, it doesn't sound like a good idea to me. <laughs> Everyone knows when you travel internationally, you're only allowed to carry six ounces of souls. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be in a little see-through bottle. Yeah. <laughs> I find. I, I, I. She waves her hands above her head and says, "I hereby bequeath you the soul gem." I will hold it in good stead for you until you come back. Um, if you do not mind, I would like to do some research on it and perhaps begin planning how to disarm it. Okay. I'm pretty sure I know how to get her out. I just need the stuff to get her out. Oh, excellent already. You should step. trade notes at some point. You seem to have a fascinating mind on you. I try to keep uh. several. Uh. <laughs> and with a claw, he picks up the emerald and puts it in a, in a, a bag. The emerald itself is about this big. So he takes out the a block pouch, bag. puts it in. <laughs> yeah. 16 ounces. Uh, all right, I can I can take you down to the ship. If you if you have no preparations you'd like to make, that's, that's fine by now, me. Now that we're safely through customs. Yeah, ship, right. Ship, ship. Excellent. All right, uh, are we sure we don't want to go investigate on how to find some like I don't know potions of fire resistant, a cloak of fire resistance, long johns of fire resistance? <laughs> yeah, we actually should do that, and and frankly, we we've got the cash to do it. Um, I haven't done all the paperwork necessary to tell you guys exactly how much money each of you has, but just uh, looking at it briefly, we are pretty flush, I think. Um, I mean, I'm looking at many thousands of gold. There's 1,400 platinum right there. There's... Did you want to? Two thousand. You've also been gone 3, a month. Gold, Twelve thousand gold. Yeah, I know that we need to pay our monthly expenditure, but it's not that hefty. Take a well, look. Well, it'd also be good to check on it. Sure. So our our monthly upkeep is fifty one hundred. Uh, hang on, real fast. We'll just erase that amount of gold from the dump, and we're still fine. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, uh, we we have fifty four hundred from Volta. Yeah. Um. So yeah, hang on here. I mean, well, it's so out of that fifty four because we spent a little, but hang on. So I, I put that to zero, and then I erased. That twelve thousand becomes eleven thousand, and then, bam, we're fine. So I'm still looking at many, many thousands of gold. Um. So, and we still we have other random shit in here too. We just haven't even addressed yet. Like we still have the creepy black dragon mask, which is likely magical, but we haven't identified. Um, we have. Uh, Brand is carrying the dark vested sword. Okay, we've got a um, bunch of plus one shit. <laughs> I forgot we have 500,000 copper, 100,000 silver. Here's 5,000 gold. Here's uh, 800 platinum and. Uh, well, most of, most of that cash is actually at the keep already. So I assume we need power of Seneschal to pay people off so we don't necessarily need to go pay them ourselves. Well, right. What I'm saying is it wasn't deducted from our sheet yet. Wherever the, the shit physically lies, right. it doesn't matter in terms of like our <laughs> banking balance. So the amount of money that we have available to us, though, 
is I my conservative estimate is somewhere in the fifty to seventy five thousand range. Sounds about right. Um, so I, I mean, if we need to try to find like fire resistant something or others, uh, we we can probably do that. Especially because now well, we're only four people. <laughs> hey, savings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although I don't know about you know. Is this gonna be like buying a, a bridesmaid's dress for a wedding? I'm only gonna wear it once. once. <laughs> uh, I mean, it depends. I feel like fire is one of those sort of evergreen, popular energy types that bad guys like to throw at us. Yeah. Okay. We just typically throw a lot back. Yeah. Yeah, but also that means they're also going to be everything we fight is going to be more resistant to that as well. So that yeah. Could... It's going to oh. really put a damper on a lot of what I do. I'm actually seriously <laughs> considering if, like, I, like, Sean, I, and I don't know if something like this exists within the game, but What's I would be something that would allow me to substitute energy types in my spells. You could be a lore wizard. Shut yeah, up. You could be a lore wizard. <laughs> you could be that. Um, not really. As a sorcerer, you focus, and that's your job. Yeah. And you I don't. Chose I don't. To focus fire. Yeah, because there are mechanics that are unique to classes on that. I, I'm normally, you know, I'm normally pretty. Yeah, fuck it, we'll find a way to do it. But that's already somebody's special sauce. Yeah, but I didn't know that when I made this guy, and right. police didn't exist yet. What the the way I could think about doing it, and I throw it up to the group as well. Um, is you would spend a certain number of sorcery points to change the energy type. However, I would make you swap another class feature for it. Like, because you have to choose yeah. which sorceress, uh, what are they called? Uh, like, metamagic feats. Right? Metamagic, yeah. Well, yeah. so which, here's which, the thing. Yeah. So if there had been an energy substitution metamagic feat for sorcerers, yeah. I would have taken it ages ago. Um, I had assumed that there was one or that it would be in another book when I made this character. I didn't realize that they're going to take that ability away from like meta magic feats from the old books and yeah. throw it as a class feature on a totally different unrelated class. Yeah. Um, which to me is a weird design choice. Um, what? Who has that then? Lore Masters. At least does. Lore yeah. Masters do. Yeah, which is, is so fucking weird to me. Like, I'm fine with with that being a thing. Yeah. Um, and so my trepidation is actually about Mike and Elise, right? Because somebody in the party already has that sauce, yeah, right? Already and I don't want to take away specialness from a character if Mike is not cool with it. Like, as a design choice, I could we could easily write that as a meta magic feat, right? But I also don't want to say Mike has built a character, and right. now we fiat you into being able to do the same thing. I mean, I guess... It's, and so it's I mean, up to you. It's, it's up to, essentially up to you two. It's, it's, yeah, I was going to say, like, it, I, I don't think it's fair to put all that on Mike necessarily, but... It's yeah, like, yeah. I, I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily mind the metamagic feat option, because you're going to spend sorcery points on it. I don't have yeah. to spend anything to do it. Yeah. yeah. And also, I mean, one, it doesn't work on, uh, it does not work on cantrips. Yeah. Yeah. I can only switch certain types. Okay. I can't do all types. Okay. So if that's how it's written there, I would have it be the same thing. I would say, and how do you choose those types? Not having the lore master thing up in front of me. Okay. Yeah, there's a list. Hang on. Okay. Actually, yeah, I, I I bought the PHP in roll twenty, so I can look at this too. Is lore master in the PHP? It's not in the PHP. <laughs> yeah. It's the PHP. Oh, it's not. Okay. Yeah, that's, the, that's, that's why I didn't know. Okay. Yeah, that's why I didn't know. It's one, know it's one of the extra ones. Yet. Okay. Yeah. Oops, I clicked the wrong thing. That's okay. Uh, da, 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 where is it? It's in Spell Secrets? No, that's... I think it's in this one. I'm also just taking a look at my spells and trying to see if I have enough different types to kind of muddle my way through. Acid, Cold, fo Fire, Force, Lightning, Necrotic, Radiant, Thunder. Get to Psychic. Oh, yeah, that's fine. So it's like Elemental Substitution. Correct. Kind of, yeah, yeah, basically, and it does have to have, and it can only obviously affect uh, to, to whenever you cast a spell uh, with a spell slot, which is everything but cantrips. 
Okay. So I would say we would give you the same thing. You'd have to switch out a metamagic power for it. Okay. Um, I don't remember metamagic, whatever it is. Um, and it would cost you two sorcery points per use. Yeah, okay. Um, interesting. All right. That's so that, what is, what is, how does it work? So if I'm doing that, then I gotta decide it's probably gonna go in place of heightened spell, which is useful but narrower. Yeah. I mean, the only the, the only other obviously, the only other issue obviously is that you already have the option to you know cast a lot. I mean, you you can yeah. use them to cast more spells per day. You can. Yeah. You know, you know what? what if Let's we, talk what about if an after game and put additional thought into it. Yeah, right. We, Powered we, we spell. Yeah. Something I was thinking. What if we what if we put an additional restriction on it? Say it's you pick this is as a meta magic feat. So you pick one specific uh, elemental type that you can change things into. Only on cantrips. Right. And, I mean, not on cantrips. Right, right, right. And, what I'm saying uh, is rather than it being pick any of them on the yeah. fly, pick one ahead of time, you can turn any spell of some other type into that type, in, into that one type and only that one type. Yeah, I think it's interesting, but let's let's move the game along now and talk about yeah, it that's after. Fine. Yeah. Uh, in the short term, what we need are items of flame resistance. That's what we need right now. Yeah. Uh, yes, they do require achievement, so which might be a problem to solve. Which sucks. I think for most of us, that's a problem, actually. How many uh, can you have? I, I might be the only one that doesn't. Three? Three. You can have three items yeah. attuned. I've only um, got two, so I'm a, I would be okay for one. Although, I'm trying to remember, didn't you give us the option to have... Wasn't there some way that we had said that we could do extra? Or is we just three made, already? We just made it so that uh, the earrings didn't count, because that was yeah, costing we it, one of us. Yeah, yeah there we are a couple it, yeah. things. We, we made okay. it so the earrings you could were attuned to you, but did not yeah. take up an attunement slot. Um, the other option is, since we've sort of decided that ion stones don't take up attunement slots, um... Did we decide that? I don't Sean remember. Sean seems to have. No? If he, if he, yeah, you've when? talked about it, uh, previously, that's why I've got, like, hey, like, a couple of us have ion stones that don't count against us. Okay, we'll say that I did. originally said. Okay. We'll say that I did. Oh, yeah, no, I totally remember that conversation now. Yep. Yeah. Um... So if that's the case, maybe we can try to find ion stones of flame resistance. They'll cost more. That's the that's the typical downside to something like that. It's up to you guys what you want to buy. You're in uh, the largest city in the north. You'll be able to find stuff given time. Okay. Well, and time is the issue. Um, well, let's take a look. We'll try to seek out... I'll put out my feelers. We'll all put out our feelers? We'll put out feelers. Oh, I actually have something... You guys are going to have to... to fire. Do you? Uh, yeah. yeah, your armor. My shard. My shard yeah. of... I or something like that. Yeah, yeah your shard Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, so we... You guys are going to have to explain this in more detail to Brand, so he knows what he's looking for. Brand, we're going to a place made of fire. We're trying to get something that makes it so fire doesn't hurt you as much. Oh, uh, okay. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll put out my feelers trying to find really anything of flame resistance, but preferably ion stones. Or scrolls with a particularly long duration. Wait, sorry, back. Like what if there mean? is such a thing as say a scroll of fire resistance with a 12 hour duration or something like that. The duration on resistance is one minute. Yeah. And it, resistance also only is single target, right? Yes. Yeah. Is it concentration as well? Sure. Uh, probably. probably. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Yes, it is concentration. Yeah. I will say the one thing I dislike about the way Fifth Ed is balanced is they really like. 
I don't like that they baked the like the lower level magic setting into the base game quite as hardcore as they did. Like I'd, I'd like maybe a little bit more freedom, even if they made rules for like scales of these things, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Because they balance everything around the, the assumption that you didn't have this shit. Right. Yes. I am running a high magic game, and so we just need to figure out tweaks that work for you guys, right? Because yeah, I like high I, magic games. That's, and and I, I feel like that's oeuvre. a fairly classic way of playing D and D. Like, yeah. I'm, I, 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 it feels like that's something of an oversight on their part. I mean, I don't know. I mean, we can get to the theory of it, but yeah. you guys have some shopping. Well, so, I mean, so, okay, so prot energy, prot energy is up to an hour. <laughs> and what does that protect you from? You choose a, a, a type. Okay. Oh, sorry, you get resistance. Excuse me. Well, that's, I mean, that's the kind of thing we're looking for. It's closer. And what else? So, but again, yeah, scrolls it's, of protection it, from energy. But again, is that also level. concentration and also single target? Yep. It, it, well, it's a, it's not concentration because it's a scroll. Yeah, it is. Oh, really? No. Yeah. So when you, yeah, when you cast a concentration spell from a scroll, you still oh, have it still counts? Well, fuck, there oh, you go. Yeah. 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 So it sounds like you're down to items of resistance. Yeah. Uh, what else can we do? Uh, how about this? I mean, I would be willing to concentrate on it if it, we could get a multi-target long-term version and just, like, sacrifice the ability to cast concentration spells all day. It would be super uh, awesome if there was a spell tower somewhere where you could be researching. Oh, wait! <laughs> yes, but we don't have the kind of time, I don't uh, think. Time pressure's a fucking bitch! So, I mean, now I know the sort of thing I want to do later, right? Spells I'll invent in the future. Unless, Elise, you're just willing to say goodbye to your brother, and then it doesn't matter. But, <laughs> but then why are we doing it in the first place? So. Uh, so, I mean, should I be looking up items of resistance, Sean, or? Yes, rings of resistance cost 6,000 apiece. And it only so, gives us resistance too. So if we, yeah, you know, if we start, okay. start singeing okay. ourselves as we walk across the plane of fire. Yeah. So well, I we did, would take like, half, right? I, yeah. Yeah. I did a quick half. look up as well. The yeah. So the difference between the ring ring gives you resistance. The mantle gives you advantage on saving throws against that damage. Yes. Yeah. In the world. The, the common magical tradition is to create rings of resistance. Should you want to invent or create your own things over time, we can talk about that. That's why you have created a keep. That's why you're paying for it. That's why you've built specific things for it, is to yes, be able to do that sort of creation research. So in the short term... never gotten that kind of time to do it because, well... This is... I'm, I'm just going to point out... Yeah, because shit happens. Yeah. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Um, and no one has already thought, hey, wouldn't it be nice if... You're the adventurers. And, and you're, they made you, those things. I feel like most people aren't, you know, this is your book. This is a jaunt through the plane of yeah. fire. Yeah. This isn't uh, someone well, we else's should, book. This is your book. Yeah, yeah, so let me see. We should probably just get some rings. Like, I think, let's go find some rings. Everyone so, but, uh, but, uh, Finn needs one. Yeah, Barrick. Well, okay, Barrick's not with us. Uh, Fen also somehow Fen still has room for an atonement item or, or attunement. An atonement. Not atonement. I mean, oh god, why? what have I done? Uh, Brand, has room, <laughs> Brand has room for attunement. He's only got one, which is Titan Stone Knuckle. Yeah. Um, let me see here. Uh, oh, poor Vale and all of Vale's stuff. Um. You just well, have all of Ale's stuff. I know, like, we could take this stuff if we need to. I'm, I'm rather seriously considering grabbing the Ion Stone of Agility just to have a higher dex in the short term. Hey, uh, you want to borrow You already a, have uh, one. You already it's, it says you already have one, Ted. Oh, I do already have one. Um, I'm actually the only one who's going to have to say goodbye to something. Also, because... do, we make a, do we make a determination on the Ion Stone attunement cost? Yeah, I, I, I clearly remember the conversation after talking with Ben. Um, that we did say that you can have one eye on stone without attunement. Okay, well then I have a free slot. There you have a free slot. It's after one. 
that you have to have attunement. You uh, can't just stack them. Right. Okay. Oh. I, I don't think that's how the conversation went, because if that's the case, I've been breaking that rule for months. Okay. Um, because I mean, I you have, have. I have two. I have okay. two. I've got the Dusty Rose Iron Stone yeah. and the Iron Stone of the Joe. We'll figure that part out. We we can we can backtrack all, right. all of this in a bit, right? Okay. It also makes it sound like I would like to point out that you have a small stripper floating around your head. But it does. Yeah. Me. I am Dusty Rose. <laughs> Want to go to the she champagne back, room? She does backflips. Um, that's not all she does. <laughs> Why does a ring of resistance require attunement? Ah. It's an incre- it's a rare magical item. Because they're trying to prevent us from having all of the nice things. Because we're supposed to have three magical items and then some other bullshit. Not one per finger, hand, knuck. Yeah. You know, yeah. They, they're not doing the 3.5 slot system. I didn't mind the slot system. The slot system made sense to me. I, I don't hate it either, but we're, we're not here to debate the merits of this system over the old one. I think no, we are to some degree. But we're just maybe. grumbling about it while we figure <laughs> yeah. out our options. Yeah, yeah. Because here are the things that I currently have that yeah. are attuned. Yes. Wand of the War Mage plus two. I'm not yes. getting rid of that. No, fuck bracers, no. Bracers of Defense. Well, yes. maybe. Uh, and then the Robe of Stars, which is not coming off of my body. No. So, <laughs> I mean, so I feel like the never for dude. this scenario, <laughs> yeah. the, for the scenario where we're going to be wandering around fire, like you probably need the Bracers of Protection less. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Hang on. Let me just double check my racers of defense. Just remind myself exactly what it does. I'm pretty sure it ups my AC. Plus two bonus to AC if you're wearing no armor and using no shield. So I would go back down to a 16 AC. Which is perfectly fine for a caster your level. I'm constantly at a 15. Yeah. So... Yeah, bad guys don't like me. But you can at least fly away from them. Yeah, Nobody likes you. That's been my saving grace. I don't even <laughs> like me. I, I'm a self-hating I like sorcerer. The, I, feel, I feel like that's not true. I feel like you're pretty, pretty chill yourself. <laughs> I fucks with myself. Oh, come on. Really? What? I'm, I'm looking at the list of beasts so I, on things I could polymorph myself into. And even like and most of it's crap, right? Some of it's fine, some of it's fun, but the giant fire beetle, of course, does not have fire resistance. Come on, what? giant fire beetle. Okay, so... Uh, Alright, so how much, Sean, for three rings of flame resistance? Who's uh, gonna make me the persuasion check? Wait, so hang on, so we're, we're I am. assuming... So one of them... Didn't, who had, who had the, the rune that matched up? Fen, I assume, ended up with the I room. Fen had yeah. the fire resistance room, yeah. Yeah. Okay, just making sure. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll make the persuasion check. Okay, give me a persuasion check. You you find a rare magical item shop, and there's a, a fine gentleman, and they're willing to sell them to you, but these are his last three, and he doesn't want to let go of them unless he wants to let go of them. You I'll like this story. Uh, hang on. Could we go to the Plain of Water instead? I got like nine different fucking like <laughs> giant shark, giant orca options. Angry dolphin. <laughs> yeah, As opposed spider. to happy dolphin? As yeah. opposed to happy dolphin, yeah, yeah. I only rolled a four. You got a 16? Thank Actually, you. I need to get my dice and roll. Hang on. Said, well, then you need to rethink your life. Uh, so you fucking lie. For all three? Yeah. Is someone sucking up like a milkshake or something? Are you perhaps hearing? It was like a fan. Noise? It was like a. No. No. It's a fidget spinner. Uh. Oh, weird. Uh, yeah, it'll be eighteen thousand. You guys matched on your persuasion rules. Ugh, market rate. I mean, 18,000. That, that seems so high. I... You already made a persuasion roll. You guys told me you no, didn't man. want to roleplay shopping, I, so we just roll for I, it. I understand <laughs> that I made a persuasion roll. 
roll. I'm saying I could cast friends and get advantage. Um, but Those are fine, things that right? happened before you make the roll. Don't you think that, like, if you sell magical items, don't you have a, fr- like, no friends zone, like, spell right. cast, like... Yeah, you would be blackballed from that place forever, because they like, know nice afterwards. Smart ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is water deep. We can r- just slowly work our way around all of the magical shops. <laughs> yeah. Did we burn bridges here? Yeah, we burn bridges here. All right, hang on. Okay, yeah, next one, okay, next one. Yeah. So, 18,000, so yeah. that gets rid of... So there's 5, well, then you start getting like, oh, so well, this guy I'll cast forgetfulness on. <laughs> okay, so that'll get rid of. I promised to cast friends on, an, on one of his competitors. So <laughs> now I'm down to 3,000 to go, which means that I knocked that down to 300,000 copper, and we're good. Okay. You 18,000 are... gold spent. <laughs> You have three very wonderful looking gold rings with a red opal in the center. Warm to the touch. Should I be cool to the touch? You're cool to the touch. <laughs> Wait, did you give us oh, shit, he gave us the <laughs> He gave you the ice thing. ones. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Which, I should have tried this on before I left the shop. No no no, no. That, that that'll be fine because it's it's a counter meta, see? So, uh, we're, we're oh my assuming, god! Because we're gonna go to the the plane of flame, right? So all the bad guys know it's the plane of flame. Everything is either fiery or resistant to fire. So they're all casting ice spells to get around that fact, and we're gonna fucking surprise the shit out of them. No. Okay. Oh, I was with you. I was with you. <laughs> I love you guys. I do. I love you so much. Or it's one of those things where, like, since they're from the plane of fire, like, it's a different kind of fire, so that it works on these, on, on themselves. Because it, wouldn't it be dumb if they're like, oh, we, we are fire beasts. Let us do damage to each other in this ritual fight. Oh, uh, we can't hurt you. <laughs> oh, yeah, stop it! Stop it! Yeah. So, like, different no one of fights. fire. So, like, yeah. this is the grease fire area. <laughs> and that's the electrical fire. <laughs> There's your chemical fires. There's your, yeah. yeah. All right, so you guys have procured your rings. Is there anything else you would like to grab before spell jamming? Just grab a couple of healing potions. Um, I'm skimming. I'm skimming. I mean, you probably want some healing potions. It never hurts. Can I have a potion of resist soul flying out of my body? Uh, no, because that does not exist, and it's funny for me. (laughs) (laughs) Uh... Which I didn't think was going to be such a major issue. (laughs) Right? (laughs) There's a helm of teleportation. Uh, I would like to buy two potions of superior healing. Okay. Potions of superior healings are 450 gold. Uh, They're 8d4 plus 8. Oh, cheers. I will pay the 900. Can I buy two of those as well? 900 gold. So, there you um, go, let's sir. Let's just buy a, a case of 24 of them, please. Uh, they have a total of, because they have to make them, uh, in stock right now, they have 12. Essentially, in your investigations, you are able to procure, as a party, if you so choose, 12 potions of greater healing. Which is how much? Uh, 450, or, I'm sorry, 12 potions of superior healing, uh, which are 450 apiece. Shouldn't it cost less since we're buying in bulk? Persuade. Make a persuasion roll. Are you going to friend him first? I just... no. Uh, uh, We know that's dangerous, okay? (laughs) <laughs> I feel like it wouldn't stop Zed. That, no, it probably wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, that one was good. So it was 12 times 450. Somebody tell me what that is. 5,400. 5,400. Uh, take 25% off that. Take 25% off the 5,400. God damn it. I don't math. You guys know I don't math. <laughs> I, I know, I know. 
it, can we just call it 3,000 and I can just erase this line of copper? Yes, we can call it 3,000 and you can erase that line of copper. That seems Thank about you. right. That's probably more like a third, maybe. I don't math. Okay, what it, hang on one second. Um, how much does it cost? What, what's this spell scroll cost? What level? Uh, I'm looking that up right now. Fifth level. Fifth level spell scrolls cost 640 gold apiece. I would like to buy a scroll of planar binding, please. Absolutely. Just, you gonna do what it cost? You wanna try and finagle? How many potions did we just buy? Twelve? Yes. We're, we're gonna be buying there, an awful lot of... There are four of us? So yes. So that's three per person? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just put them all in the dump. Um, well, I have three on my character sheet. Yeah. I would prefer that you put your potions that you have on your character sheets, as opposed to putting so, them in the dump so that they don't get keep track of. Yeah, just so, yeah, don't even put them just yet when you get out of yourself ready. Okay. Soup. Healing. Pot. Can't I just get a healing potion that, like, scales with my level? Wouldn't that be great? It's like Diablo. That's right. Someone should have invent some that. Older healing potions. Don't so they get better with age? Isn't it like wine? <laughs> um, so I tell the guy, look, we're we're going to be buying a lot of things from you. Um, it would be cool if we could just get like some kind of sort of package know, deal, continual option. But if you'd rather it be item by item, that's fine. Item by item, he rolled that. He literally, his die roll is better than yours without even. Oh no, no, that, that's fine. I, I rolled uh, not well. Yeah, you um, rolled four. Yep. When you yep. can roll the thirty and not crit, you know that a fifteen yeah. is low. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's that's fine. That's fine. Come here. Um, so in, in in that case, then on that particular item, that scroll, gotcha. uh, how much is it? Six hundred and forty, for a, a level five scroll. Yeah. Wouldn't, uh... <laughs> 640 sounds like a perfectly fair price. Here's He's 650. Like... A 10 gold <laughs> tip for you for he, doing uh... such a good job. Thank you. It's actually going to be 700 for you because you critically <laughs> failed. I gave him a tip. All right, fine. It's fine. 700. This is all fair. It's my last one. My shipment's not coming in for a month and you're a dick. I don't know. <laughs> It's funny how Elise is actually mean, and you just kind of fall into it. Like, <laughs> I think he cast friend on you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, wait a minute! Man, you roll. It's, that's on you, buddy. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, what did you buy at a level five scroll, Zed? Planar binding. Planar binding. No, I, I, I'm doing the buying. Oh, you for, were doing yeah. the you were doing the persuading for. Okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she. Uh, Elise was on the assumption that yeah, they, that it was going to get us a better deal. <laughs> <laughs> that did not work that time. Indeed on not. that one fucking thing, <laughs> we more than oh, made sure. up for it on the potions. Like, I would oh, like sure. to point out the we're one still, thing that I wanted. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Whatever. I paid for it out of out of group coffers anyway, and we are as it stands still way Wait. up on this whole shopping. Wait. You trip. paid for it with what? Yeah, if Group you guys funds. are marking off your personal funds, don't because when we when we stock up, because for... then we get to let you waste our gold, which critically fail. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. You know what? It's no, fine. you're right. You can make all of the uh, persuasion rolls for your own items from now on, if you would like. <laughs> I've saved us like I don't know. 10,000 gold over the course of this fucking uh, uh, adventure. But if you would like to do it yourself, feel free. I, I promise it's fine by me. Oh, we'll um, anywho. So are there other are there other items that we need to get before we go? How are we doing it? Like food is all accounted for sort of deal. Yeah. I tend not to, unless you guys are like we are traveling long distances, right? Like when you guys were going over the mountains and stuff, right? And you were in a place right. where you couldn't easily attain food. I would care about that. 
But I'm yeah. only going to care about that when travel is part of the adventure. I'm never going to care about that when it's like, I have to walk into a city. Okay, well, you're going to be in a city in like 30 seconds. Yeah. Uh, okay, I mean, we'll maybe not. You can fuck up. I guess, but, as well. Yeah. I'm sure we're... I mean, I haven't been packing food, but I mean, we'll buy food. So uh, yes. 50 gold will get you sufficient supplies for 20 days of food to feed four people. Yeah. Do you want me to mark that? I'll mark that. Um... Could you identify something for us? Mm, possibly. What is it? It's this creepy black dragon mask. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Please, what a fascinating artifact you have here. I need oh, to look up my shit. notes wear, on it real wear, quick. Wear gloves. Yes, wear, yes, wear, of course. Wear gloves. Of course, yes, of course. Uh, where, oh, here we go. Drink. Uh, I could probably just look it up like this, right? Black... Tell me that you put it on and you yeah, become yeah. a black dragon and you gain resistance to fire. Please tell me that. Please tell me All that. All right. <laughs> so yeah, after you bothering. This I, is I don't the... fucking care. I'll put my bracers back on in a heartbeat. This is a wondrous legendary item. It also costs you a thousand dollars. It also costs you a thousand dollars or a thousand gold to write... identify it. You... Okay. okay. It is That's a fine. wondrous legendary item. Baz, you should write it down. I will also write it. This horned mask of glossy ebony has horns and a skull-like mane. The mask reshapes to fit the wearer attuned to it. While you are wearing the mask and attuned to it, you can access the following properties. You have damage resistance to acid. If you already have damage resistance to acid from another source, you gain immunity to acid. If you already have immunity to acid from another source, you gain hit points equal to half of any acid damage you were dealt. While you are wearing no armor, okay, you can add... Hang on. Do you have this all written down? I do, but I, I'm enjoying reading it, and then I'm going to put okay, it in the chat. No okay, no problem. You're just going way too fast for me to write Sorry. it down, so sure. as long as it's... I'm good. Keep going. Draconic Majesty. While you are wearing no armor, you can add your charisma bonus to your armor class. <laughs> Dragon Breath. If you Wait, have hang a on. breath... Hang on. Hang on. Well, <laughs> no armor. And... Charisma 2 armor class, indeed. Dragon Breath. If you have a breath weapon that requires a test recharge, it regains a charge of 6. Don't worry about it. None of you have a... Dragon Sight. You gain dark vision with a radius of 60 feet or an additional 60 feet of dark vision if you already have that sense. Once per day, you can gain blind sight out to a range of 30 feet for 5 minutes. Hang on. Dragon Tongue. Hang on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share it with you guys. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm mostly keeping up with you. I just need you a little slower. You said uh, bl oh blind sight God. once per day. Yeah, but I'm just going to share. Need, you don't need to keep up. You don't need to keep Just let him read. Dragon Tongue. You can speak and understand Draconic. You have advantage on any charisma check you make against black dragons. Ooh. Legendary resistance once per day. If you fail a saving throw, you can choose to succeed instead. Water breathing. You can breathe underwater. Okay, and, the, so and now I'm going to share it with you so you can just look at it. What's I really, I one? just, I just, I wanted to read it because it's awesome. I, 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 I'm it sorry is awesome. that that caused some consternation. I just it caused no consternation. I am not concerned. <laughs> it is now in all of your journals. What's a journal? Character sheet. Yeah, that's the tab Bio. with the character sheets on it. Yeah, it's the Bio. tab with the character sheets on it. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, that is what it is. Holy crap. That's real sweet. It requires attunement. Ha <laughs> ha. And yes, of course, it requires attunement. It's a legendary wondrous item. Yes, yes. That seems like a good thing for said to wear after we get back from the flame fire. Sure. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm already resistant to acid damage, so. And is already wearing, you know, a suit of black dragon armor. Yeah. True, true. Although, 
if he I doesn't get the benefit bonus, of the charisma bonus. Yeah, well, which well, is good because if I had to add my job bonus to my armor class, my armor class would go down. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, general team? Uh, I'm just looking through. Sorry. Let's go, Jan. What does it gains a recharge of six mean? Uh, so if, if you, you have, have a, a daily weapon. breath weapon, so yeah. if there are certain dragonlings who have a once per day breath weapon, so instead uh -huh. of it being once per day at the beginning of each turn, you would roll a d6, and on a six, uh, you would get to use it again. Yeah. Gotcha. It looks like that was our only unidentified magic item. Does halitosis considered a breath weapon? No, nobody. Okay. No, I, I, I was. I was there. I was I, tracking. Yeah. Yeah. I was also muted, but so you missed the obligatory. Ha! Great. I appreciate <laughs> you redoing it for me. What else we got? Uh, I haven't had an opportunity to try to buy anything for myself because I've been trying to do all this crap. Um, hang on, I'm just okay. So I think we're good. Uh, on most of this, um, team, should we? And we can do it after stream, but should we? Uh, turn our items into hard currency, or do we want to keep them as items because of possible exchange rate? Uh, I mean, I think uh, Brand is feeling the pressure to, to time pressure. Let's go! Come on! He's kind yeah. of dancing around like, come on, let's go! Yeah, I know, you haven't killed anything in ten minutes, but it is a serious question. We're going to a lawful evil plane I, I think it'd be better to keep them as items. We can we can sell the sword there. It's fine. Let's go. Yeah. Probably get more money for it too. And the gems and eight million other things. That's that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Um Yeah, I don't I can't think of anything in particular that we would need. If I think of something, Sean, can I get like one oh yeah, I fucked up and forgot and we'll deal with it later. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm not gonna be like <laughs> Yeah, so you, you, you get one. One. Yeah, one. Yeah, no, you're fine. Yeah, absolutely. If you forget okay. something, man, I'm not I'm not going to hold a forgetful mind over gameplay. Thank you. All right, yeah. then I'm good to go. Then let's then let's just forge ahead. I, I have plenty of legitimate ways that I'm screwing you guys, so I don't need like a, ha ha, you forgot <laughs> to buy that potion. Yeah. Well, but yeah, it's going to be like one. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't abuse it. Just It's just <laughs> that one. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay, hey can guys, we... what's going on? Oh, I can do a Mickey Mouse voice if you want. Oh. <laughs> I think our next bad guy has, has to, talk to talk like, like Mickey that. Mouse. Come on, guys. Yeah. I just want to eat souls. I just like, like to play flesh. <laughs> the demon lord that we, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to have a little flesh with Make me today? Up. How about a flesh pate? Oh. <laughs> Minnie was quite tasty. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Not so many as a meal, huh? <laughs> okay, yep. so yep. Mickey Mouse <laughs> done. You guys started me on it. You said I sounded like Mickey Mouse. No, no, no. I'm I'm a hundred percent okay with where that went. Okay, good, 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 <laughs> good. Okay, so we're not gonna kill this guy. So he has to come back, and he has to keep doing the voice, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're actually gonna like bind him into a gem that we can like just poke and make it talk whenever we want. Let me out of here, you fuckers! <laughs> <laughs> this is really not fair! <laughs> swallow your soul! Swallow, swallow your soul! Not <laughs> <laughs> yeah. anymore, buddy! <laughs> okay. So, having gotten all of the things you feel like you need to go to the elemental plane of fire and enter the city of Brass to rescue the soul of your lost paladin, Beric, you bed down for the night because it's getting late in the day. Um, and in the morning, you head back to Castle Waterdeep, where you meet Elminster again, and he walks you back down into the mountain that I can never remember the GD name of. Is it on the thing? It's not. The big mountain that's fucking right there. I don't remember what it's called. Uh, 
Mount and uh, Mount, Mount, Mount Waterdeep. Mount, it's now Mount Waterdeep. In my, in my, uh, in my canon, it, it might even be that in the real canon, it is now Mount Waterdeep. Uh, deep underneath Mount Waterdeep, where, as you go through the expertly carved caves, you find yourself in a, what looks to be a dry dock, sitting in a large cavern with a three-masted ship. Huge prow with a gem at the end of it and a, and a steering column that is encrusted with all of these arcano uh, magical items uh, that allow it to steer through the nothing that exists between planes. Sitting in front of the boat itself is a large stone circle carved with intricate runes. Elminster wishes you would do as you board the ship and the crew prepares to leave. So long, farewell. So, Alvider Zane, goodbye. Alvider Zane, good night. Your good night, that is correct. And thus, a few of the crew who do not go with the ship are working some uh, machinery down on the side of the large stone circle, and it begins to shimmer and glow with this blue light. And as it does, the, the captain of the ship and the pilot who are working within the pilot house to get this ship moving call down the sails, and with no wind at all, they furl open and, and look like they have taken on full wind. The ship lurches for a second and rises out of its moorings, sitting square with a circle of energy. And in a moment, there is a lurch. As the ship begins to move forward and slip through the portal. With a sense for a moment of dislocation, nearly losing your feet. You find yourself as the portal passes over you, looking down upon a large sphere with a, a star closer than you expected, off in the distance. Hanging above Toriel, the planet that contains the land you know as Faerun, you find yourself now between material planes in the astral itself. Bitches. Fen's not very excited about this. He's kind of standing stone faced and like, I think I'm going to be sick. <laughs> Brand is standing in the bow, eagerly looking around. It's an intense field of stars that you see when you're out there. Out in the distance, you see dots of light, splashes of color across the, the night sky. It's as if someone had peeled away the atmosphere, as they have, and you find yourself staring at deep space. And at first imperceptibly, and then more and more quickly, Toriel you and the- voices the chaos gods? I <laughs> want a sandwich. Hi, what a sandwich! <laughs> <laughs> also that, yes. <laughs> uh, in, almost imperceptibly at first, but more and more quickly, Toril and the sun that it, it circles, I think two, maybe only one, it has three moons, whatever, and the sun that it circles begin to slip off into the distance, becoming smaller and smaller and smaller until they too are pinpricks of light. No different than any of the other ones around you. Over the course of the next few days, and time is squishy, but the captain has a very precise way that he keeps time in order to kind of keep sanity amongst the crew, forcing people to bed down uh, at very specific hours of the day in order to keep cycles moving. Your first few days are mostly filled with the gorgeous sights of the astral. It's every once in a while you'll pass this large sort of crystalline sphere that you see off in the distance. There are ast pods of astral whales that fly by and other strange flying ships uh, you can see off in the distance occasionally, none coming too close. Um, none also built to be an almost exact replica of a ship the way Elminster and his crew have built this one. Most of them have either some sort of large crystalline shape uh, protruding out of the bottom of them or sails that come off from the bottom of them. This is very much a, a frigate in construction that has been jury-rigged, for lack of a better term, into becoming a spelljammer. It is not your classical spelljamming ship, as you guys start to notice as you move along what look to be trade lines that are far more active than you would have believed from your last time out. 
With explanation, the captain will say that it's because the, on your first shakedown cruise with the Spirit of the North, you guys didn't understand how to travel properly, right? And that there are essentially lanes of most efficient travel you through froze. the astral. I did am I back? Let me know when I'm back. Yeah, you're, you're back. back. Okay. So there are essentially lanes of most efficient astral travel. Um, and those nearest Toriel at this point have been mapped out, and they are able to at least get further out before they go into a more dangerous area. Uh, as you fly along, as I said, it, for those first few days, it's mostly uneventful with interesting sights. It's on the fifth day when you have to leave those lanes of travel and head off through this roiling mass of gaseous clouds. It's greens and pinks and purples swirling together. And the closer you get, the more you realize it creates a barrier of some kind between where you are and wherever these elemental planes are. The capital will say this is possibly the most dangerous part. Um, we know that denizens live in the spaces between where the transits happen, between material planes, the astral plane, and the elemental planes. And so we need to be on guard. It is likely we will be attacked. We have a few crossbow, or ballistae, and the crew are trained to use them. But any assistance you can provide as we travel through will, of course, be required. Absolutely. Excellent. I'm sorry, um, I'm sitting next to an exit seat. I do not feel comfortable with the responsibilities that are required of me. <laughs> Take that seat over there, hang out in the bilge with the rats. And the crappy, there crappy are airline rats food. on the Spelljammer ship? Well, there's rats on every ship everywhere. There's rats everywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but they're spell jamming rats. Yeah. <laughs> they're like the cool kid rats. When they get back to that... tutorial, they're all like, look oh, at yeah. you, wing man. Spell jamming rats have... sounds like a band name. They, they, they all have... They... <laughs> they get back, they all know cantrips. They just have an unhealthy, you know, lust for warp dust. <laughs> As you begin to penetrate these clouds, a chill comes over the whole ship. Frost starts being breathed. You can see frost when you breathe, and uh, the the, sh the crew has to work overtime to keep the the lines from freezing up on the the mast. It's not a physical I said cold. elemental plane of fire. Where are we yeah. going? <laughs> it is not a physical cold as much as it is a, a physical manifestation of a spiritual malaise. It's it's entropy. It's traveling through something that is built to slowly over time deconstruct. About eight hours into this relatively smooth ride, there's a cry. Pod! Pod ahead! Pod ahead! Pod? Yeah. The captain goes, no, can you I, tell I, me? I, yes. I asked to the person uh, next to me. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a pod of something, some sort of astral creature. There's more than one of them coming our way. Pod of astral whales. All right, governor. <laughs> Celestial whale is a creature in the old books. I don't know. Yeah, it, it is absolutely is a, a creature in the yeah. It's it's it's, it's a thing. Um, <laughs> and anybody who can look out that way first sees three sets of glowing red dots, two, two, and two, swimming towards the ship from the front. About 300 meters out, they split off, two to the right and one to the left. And the the lookout goes, Aboliths! Aboliths coming to take the ship! All hands! And bells start ringing and crew starts moving around and uh, it, it's combat. Uh, as these three undead looking giant like space piranhas, for lack of a better term, begin to close in on the ship. You know, it didn't need to be all that. I just want to. I just want to make this clear. Like, it didn't. It didn't have to go this way. Oh, it's cute. I like this boat. 
Uh, I gotta put a couple extra things on here in terms of crew. Uh, so you'll have two over here, two over here, and then uh, you guys can put yourselves on the boat where you think you would be. Mm -mm -mm. And these guys have 130. Yeah, okay. Doink. And then, doink. Uh, and commoners. Give me commoners. I require commoner. Mm, NPCs. Oh, Bailey. Monsters. Oh, wow. There we go. Uh, there are two ballistae on the ship. And for the purposes of gameplay, they're there. Uh, uh, oh. actually here. Do we maybe want to pause this? For what? Because Elise is leaving and has been trying to tell you oh, that. But... I'm sorry. Okay. And as the <laughs> Abolins dive into attack the ship, this is where we're going to call it for today. On this cliffhanger of a combat. Yeah, I, I missed it. I'm sorry. I can't see Thank Discord. Thank you anyone who is watching us for putting up with the bookkeeping and whatnot. We promise it'll be combat next time. Yeah. <laughs> so much stuff is going to happen. Oh my god. We're, we'll be entering the city of Brass. Uh, and with that, uh, we're going to call our game for the day. So thanks everyone for coming out. Uh, we'll just go around real quick and everyone say hey. Because uh, I know Muck's got to leave. Muck can say hey first. Hey. Bye. 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 Uh, <laughs> uh, Fen. Bye. Tabby Bye. Four, Twitters. Yeah, Tabby three four on the tweeters. Zed. Hi. Uh, or sorry. Hey. Hey. Uh, ZX Z E D E C X Z at Zed. on Twitter and various other places. Uh, and uh, come check us out on Monday for Welcome to the Party. Whoop whoop. Whoop whoop! Uh, Brand. What what? What what? Had to get for us to that. Yep. Thanks for watching. Uh, it's good times. Good times. Good yeah. Times. Yeah. Good joke. And I'm we, okay. <laughs> hey, I'm Throck. I am your DM for the day. Uh, a day of bookkeeping, but that's okay. Uh, well, a half day of bookkeeping and a half day of some pretty awesome role playing actually. Um, we, uh, I'm at Throck Plays on Twitter. Uh, we have another show coming up in an hour and a half, Anima Distortion, with our amazing new DM and new to streaming DM, both uh, Castle, not Castle Mac, what? No, Cactus Rose Amber and her crew continue their trip through the Anima at 8.30. So join us again for our next episode next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. We're going to go raid Power Score RPG. You probably may not see this part because we'll be done, but we love you and bye. Okay. <laughs> We're out. Ha, ha, ha.